Hello everyone, welcome to day 17th of January Lead Code Challenge and today's question is count sorted vowel strings. In this question, you are given an integer n and you need to return the number of strings of length n that consist of vowels only and are lexicographically sorted. Uh, you need to count such instances that are that can be possible for the given length of string which is n in this case and need to return that. For example, when n equals to 1, you can return independent string. The count of such strings is 5, a, e, i, o, u and when n equals to 2, uh, the count is 15 and the strings are listed here for n equals 33 the count is this and it is listed here uh, 66045 so the first thing that strikes your mind when you so see this question is uh, what uh, is a backtracking technique that you generate uh, you create a variable that stores such a count and you start uh, from the length uh, for example if n equals to 2 you start from double a and you generate all permutations of it up till double u and the typical way of backtracking how we solve it uh, but this question is not uh, what uh, we'll be solved you using the backtracking technique we'll be using a slightly different technique a smarter way to solve this question rather than the backtracking way uh, because uh, we need to return the count not the actual strings that can be generated so let's look at the logarithm right now So let's uh, let's take a case when a, n equals to one, and we have a e i o u. These are the five strings that can be generated. And let's take the other case when n equals to two. Uh, let's start from the u position. What is the next string? What is the string that can be generated when you have the first string as u? It's double. It's u u again. So it's of count one. So using you can generate one such string. Let's talk about O. If O is the first character, what can be the string consisting of length two? It could be double O or O U. So it could be O O or O U. And let's talk about other cases. Then we have I. Uh, if the pre first character is I, what are the possible strings that can be generated? It's uh, the second character could be I O U either either one of them. The count becomes three. And if we have E, then what are the four characters that are possible? Double E E I E O E U. The count becomes four. And then we have A. Using A, we can have use such five characters A E I O u and the count becomes 5 so in, ta in totality when n equals to 2 what are the total sum that can be generated 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4 plus 5 which is 3 uh, 6 10 15 let's move ahead for the third case when n equals to 3 so this is the table that i have created and these are the characters a e i o u and i have highlighted uh, the first two indicates the strings that uh, that can be generated uh, using the two character length and we'll be adding the third character to it so w plus u it can be one string that can be formed with oo you can uh, take two places uh, triple o or double o u with o u you can use u again so the new string becomes o w u so the length of such, the count of such string is 3 then you have double i with i you can use i o u its count is 3 with i o its o comma u the count is 2 and with i u the count is 1 similarly with these one double e we have e i o u with e i we have i o u and e o we have o u and e u we have u the count is 10 if you add all of them so with double A, we have all five possibilities. A, E, we have four possibilities. A, I, we have three. A, O, we have two. And A, U, we have one. So the count becomes 15. So let's try and devise a pattern. The problem is something similar to what we have done in class 10th, uh, like the AP problems, uh, where we try and analyze a pattern out of it. So it's exactly the same problem. For n equals to one, this is a behavior. 1 1 1 so all of them are 1 the total uh, count is 5 and when n equals to 2 
we have one, two, three, four, five. So hold at this position. You are at this position. Uh, with U, with O as the first character, how many new strings can be formed? O plus U. So two. This plus this. So you get two. So this is. Hence you get two here. With I you have three such possibilities. I O U. So you get three here. With E you have four possibilities. You get four here. And you have A. You have you go get five here because you have five such possibilities. The total sum becomes fifteen for n equals to two. Let's talk about the other case, the third case. How do you get three here? So one is pretty simple. So U U and U gives you one. And here there were two cases O O and O U, and you need to count such new cases. So this signifies O O and O U, and uh, the other case is O U case, O U U case, which can be formed. So O U U is signified by this position. So sum of this plus this gives us three. Similarly, uh, you had six cases here. Uh, it's tricky to elaborate i i i o i u and with i i you have uh, three such cases and i o you have uh, two such cases two such cases and i u have one such case so one three one position goes still here and one one part of the solution count is this position and one part of the count is this position so this plus this gives you 6 because you are actually interested in i o u part so this is what we calculated in the previous step similarly if we go ahead then we get we add up uh, uh these two positions and get 10 and again if we add a 5 plus 10 we get 15 So this position and this position gives us fifteen. The total possibilities are thirty-five. The answer for n equals to three is thirty-five. Let's talk about the other cases when n equals to four. So one is is directly one because there is only one way u u u u. At uh, the four, how do you get four? This plus this. You get four. Then six plus four is ten. Then ten plus ten is twenty, and ten plus twenty plus fifteen is thirty-five. So n n equals to four. The answer is seventy. Why are we adding uh, two such positions? So this this part is uh, what corresponds to. Let's take the I I case again. So I I I O and I U. I'm taking a simple case because otherwise it will become quite overwhelming. For I I, you have three possibilities. I O U, which comes from here. And if you forget. Uh, I then we have O U, and for O U you have already calculated in the previous step with the count is three, O O and O U and U U. So for these uh, this ca this count you calculated here, so this plus this is three, and the answer total total answer becomes six, and hence this position gets six. We'll be using a simple DP technique to solve to get to our answer, and let's quickly code this up. defining the dp array of size 5 and taking a count variable which is the answer and let's start building the dp array till the final row that till the last row uh, also before starting with this let's fill the array dot fill with all ones and let's start building the dp array For n equals to two, n is equal to n, starting from two because one is already pre-filled. So uh, we need to start from two till up to n because we have to, we'll be repeating the same steps n times. And let's start with uh, take another variable j equals to three. J is greater than equal to zero. J minus minus. So uh, the index, the maximum index is four. Uh, since the last row, last column will always be one, ignoring that place, and dp of j equals to dp of j plus dp of j plus one. Pretty simple. And for integer 
ई एल इन डी पी फाइंडिंग सो द लास्ट डेट ऑफ डी पी वुड गिव अस द आंसर दिन ऑफ द लास्ट डेट ऑफ डी पी विल गिव अस द आंसर ए एन एस प्लस इक्वल्स टू ई एल एंड सिंपली रिटर्न ए एन एस लुक्स प्रेटी सिंपल क्वाइट स्ट्रेट फॉरवर्ड लुक्स ग्रेट uh it accepted let's talk about the time complexity of this approach uh, the time complexity of this approach this is uh, this is this will run pretty uh, straight forward times uh, that means four times so four times into order of n so it will be total time complexity is order of n so in linear time you are actually solving this uh question and the space complexity is constant because you are using a dp array of fixed size order of one thanks for watching the video hope you liked it